Do you feel like sometimes it's just really hard to rise above the noise online? You work with an audience that a lot of other people work with, like parents in this example, and you don't really know how to create messaging that's going to attract them and at the same time as attract them, show them that you are the right person out of all the coaches in the world to work with them to help them achieve their goals, even though you know you can help them. It's hard to convince them that before you have a chance to help them. What you're about to listen to is a hot seat conversation I had with Chris. Now, Chris specializes in helping parents work on their nutrition and fitness. This is a conversation we had. It's a hot seat as part of my online trainer mentorship. Now, my high-end mentorship is where we help people who are starting at about 1,000 to 30,000 a month online. We help them scale. So they start at that 1,000 to 30,000. We help them grow from there. If that's something you're interested, you can send me a DM on Instagram and just say mentor and we can have a conversation about joining it. But in these hot seat conversations, what we do is we go super deep with one person at a time, kind of help them through any roadblocks. And so in this case, we helped Chris figure out how to attract these parents who, I mean, how would you attract them with the same type of content as everybody else? Like, what are you possibly going to say to this audience about health and fitness that 50,000 other people online aren't saying the exact same thing every single day? How are you going to stand out? Well, it's not so much that you're going to say something different or you're going to say it in a different way. It's that you're going to actually appeal and attract them in a way that um, begins the relationship with some trust. So I really hope that this conversation helps. It's a shorter one because we actually got to the point much quicker. At the end of it, Chris and I both decided that we really didn't need to talk much longer. And so I hope at the end of it, you're going to take action because Chris did, and he's had a lot of success as a result. Enjoy. Same type of question. Oh. Who yeah. do you serve? And, um, and, and what are we talking about today, man? Yeah, so I, I work with parents busy parents, uh, helping them work on their nutrition and their fitness and losing weight while keeping the house from burning down with all those kids. Uh, mm -hmm. So for me right now where I am, I just did my first launch and just a cool little update before that. I, I told Alex this morning on our check-in call, like prior to coming into OTM, uh, we were really struggling. My business was really struggling. And yesterday my wife and I got approved for a mortgage to buy a house. And yeah, so, buddy. Nice work. Thanks a lot for the help with that. There you um, go. I want to see a picture when you guys move in. Yeah. Yeah. I want to be there. Um, <laughs> but so for, for, for me, the place where I'm kind of at right now is the launch was okay. And after talking with Alex, the thing that seems to um, be like the issue was like offering, just offering more calls and doing that. And that's something that I'm trying to work on. But the other side of it is, Prior to going into the launch, before starting OTM, I had just like taken off with Reels, and I was getting all this interaction from people from Reels. And then I realized that all of those were very much cold leads, like red light leads. And for me, then I switched to just trying to focus on on parents and parents alone, and and everything dropped off too. So it's kind of like for me figuring out how to continue the growth, how to continue the conversations, and keep everything going with this like. This forward momentum. The wheels that you were doing that were I, getting a bunch of attention. Was it? It wasn't specific to to parents. It was just it, like generalized. It fitness was. Stuff. It it was. It was. It was specific to parents. But all the interactions I would get from people would be like they would, you know, would get like three hundred and something likes, and I would send messages, and a lot of them would be like teenagers. A lot of them would be mm -hmm. like uh, people who just and and I would use the specific hashtags and stuff. I, I don't know if it's just how the algorithm was pushing things out, just because it whatever mm -hmm. sound or whatever thing was in it. Um, and I seem to be on top of like my content and put a lot of thought and effort right. into it. So it's like, uh, it's kind of like at a roadblock with that. I think it's like figuring out how I can continue to just keep tapping into that, that niche or that group. Yeah. I mean, the two, the two posts that you listed here, share my screen so everybody can kind of see them as like stuff that worked well. They're good storytelling posts. They really are. You know, Nikki was a mom of two boys under, uh, what was the other one? Um, and uh, same type of idea, assume bows in a way. How mom of two, short on time, lost 10 pounds without making drastic changes. I mean, pretty good. Like, I could fight you on that and peel back the onion and like, 
help you with a little bit better language on that and and that so um, if, if you haven't listened to the podcast I released yesterday where I like went through that process of, of how we did it and got those like phrases mm -hmm. out um, I would listen to that it's the last like okay. basically third of the podcast but um, but what you have here is pretty good and I don't think that the content is the issue. I actually think this content would do well. Um, at the end of it, you know, it would be pretty cool if you were just like, and by the way, here's Nikki crushing it with her boys or whatever, right? And I mean, yeah, fuzz yeah, out yeah. her face or something, but like have some, have some visual instead of you because um, you don't look like a parent. Yeah, you know your ideal audience, and so make your make them like celebrate them okay. uh, versus cool. you, and you can have the same call to action. Um, the same type of thing with your account, right? Like, like start here about me, brand values, platforms. Like, if you're a busy parent, start here. Like, just like, like, mm -hmm. like, okay. like nail it in, because then, I mean, this is like a little bit more tactical. But then what you're going to be able to do, then what you're going to be able to do is go into other networks of parents. Like really what you have to do is you have to go out and like expand your audience of parents. And so similar, um, did we release this, this as a podcast yet? I'm not sure. It's one, it's, it was the first hot seat call that we did, which the recording is in the, is in the member portal. So you can go back and listen to it. We can, we can send it to you. But uh, it was with Jeff. And the advice that I'll give you is the exact same as him, is there are a tremendous amount of solo mumpreneurs that are on Instagram that have like 10, 20, 30,000 followers that would be so freaking happy if you did a giveaway with them. Mm. And if you have posts like what you just had, I mean, take those two posts which are the storytelling ones, and pin those to the top. The same with, with like, your start here. And then if you go out and you do, like, a giveaway where you buy a pregnancy bag to give away or you buy this special bottle that some mom has come up with or whatever these things are, you know, it might cost you fifty or hundred dollars to buy this thing. The person will be ecstatic. You'll build a great connection with this mumpreneur, who will often have people asking her about fitness stuff, and she can then refer them mm. to you, which is a hidden benefit. But then you do a giveaway where if people want to enter, then they have to follow both of your pages and comment whatever. And when somebody has to follow your page, they have to click on your page, and if you're first two pinned things on your page are amazing stories that they connect with like that. Odds are pretty good. You're going to get some inquiries from that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you don't need that sounds many, a little more like, like you got like, if you're, if you're paying 50 or hundred or 200 bucks for like giveaway from somebody, you can do that depending on your program price, but you can do that like five times and get one client. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That, I like that, that strategy That sounds a lot. like a... Yeah, it sounds much more tactical and, and planned out, but very, very... It's very feasible. It doesn't feel very abstract. So cool. It seems very actionable. Yeah. I mean, that was... That's all. Like, I don't know anything else. That was good. Hey, John, again, I hope that you really enjoyed this conversation with Chris. It was a super fun one. It was, he made it really easy on me. He's doing really, really well. You know, if you did enjoy this episode, I really think that you'll also enjoy episode 23 of the Obvious Choice podcast. The title of that is Scarily Simple Marketing You Should Try. And the idea behind that is you tried all the things you think that you should do when people tell you to do, and it's actually often a lot more simple than what you've been sold previously. So that's episode 23 in your podcast app, wherever you're at right now, just go back, The Obvious Choice, episode 23, Scarily Simple Marketing You Should Try. I think you'll love it. Additionally, this conversation was part of my business mentorship. If that's something you think you might be interested in, just head on over to Instagram. I'm at it's Coach Goodman. Send me a DM there. Just let me 
mentor myself, my team, get back to you right away. We'll have a conversation, see if it's worth a phone call. Thanks so much. Have a good day.